would do that, but you need a lot of trust in the drone operator, okay? Especially with no protective gear on at all, he could take you anywhere. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Marissa Bird on week four kicks off tonight with a classic NFC East rivalry between the Cowboys and Giants. But if we're being honest, it's been a pretty one-sided rivalry. Just ask Dak Prescott. In 14 career games, he's 12 and two against the Giants. The last time these two met back in November, Dak threw for over 400 yards and four touchdowns. The Cowboys enter tonight looking to bounce back after two straight losses. But to do that, they'll need to be better against the run. Dallas are currently giving up a league worst 185.7 yards a game. They gave up 274 alone against the Ravens last week. And in just three games, they've given up eight rushing touchdowns. So to talk a little more about tonight's game, let's bring in friend of the program, Davis Sanchez. Are you ready to talk some football? Thursday night, right? Well, yeah, I'm checking the calendar here. It says Thursday, so we should be ready to go. Let's do it. Let's go. What's going on with Dallas, Chessy? The offense has looked okay, but they just can't seem to stop the run. Is there a cause for concern, or can they get back on track against the Giants? Well, that's the Giants are a team that you can get back on track with. That's for certain. One stat you look at, if your offense is near the bottom of the league in rushing and near the bottom of the league in stopping the rush, Usually not good. And then, of course, you have the circus that follows uh, with Jerry Jones and the rest, who says it's not. It's Jerry Jones took the blame. He said, I'll take the blame for this. And then he followed that by saying it's not a personnel problem. You've been praising Giants rookie receiver Malik Neighbors. And after his big performance against the Browns, will he shine in his primetime debut? Malik Neighbors is great. I think he'll be a top three receiver in the next two years. I believe that he's that darn good. He's not gonna have a big night tonight. I don't believe. And big night in Malik. Neighbors standards are is probably still better than most. But the reason is the Cowboys, they've been so bad. His defense has gotten so much blame. It's pretty obvious you need to stop Malik Neighbors. If they don't come out there and put two guys plus the head athletic therapist on Malik Neighbors, uh, it's going to be, there's going to be real problems. There's going to be conversations about Mike Zimmer and, and his uh, his role with that team. I, be, I believe they have to do everything they can to stop Malik Neighbors. I love it when Chezzy comes to visit. He gives us so much information and then he teases us a little at the end. Thanks, Chez. <laughs> <laughs> For Neighbors to get involved, they'll need Daniel Jones to play well versus Dallas, where he has historically struggled. In eight games, Jones is one and seven with four touchdowns and five interceptions. And he's been sacked 24 times. Both teams look to avoid dropping one and three on the season. And you can catch the Thursday night action right here on TSN at 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific. But pregame gets started at 7 p.m. Eastern with TNF tonight. We are now just eight days away from the NHL season, which makes it a perfect time to talk about the grade eight Alex Ovechkin. While most know that Ovi is closing in on the all-time NHL goals record, he's also just 50 points away from reaching 1,600 points a mark only nine other NHL players have reached in NHL history. Bargaining injuries, 50 points should be attainable. As he only scored less than 50 in 2021, a season he only played 45 games. What kind of production can we expect from him this year? To start, let's look at Ovi's stats from his age 38 season last year. A season ago, he put up 65 points in 79 games. While for most players, that's a solid total, it's actually a down year for Ovechkin, and was his lowest scoring production on a per game basis throughout his career. Scoring dips at age 38 isn't new though, as even the great Wayne Gretzky was not as productive at that age. In fact, Ovi's 65 point season was the 10th best of a player at age 38. That said though, Ovi's another year older heading into the season. And how have 39 year olds performed? Well, I mean, in my case, very well. <laughs> On the high end, we've seen players like Gordie Howe score over 80 points at 39. And that happened all the way back in 1968. Were they even taking vitamins then? That was so long ago that the Maple Leafs were actually defending Stanley Cup champions that year, so, you know, I wonder what that was like. There have been more recent examples of success at 39, though. Just look at Joe Pavelski's production from last year. So it's not out of the question that Ovi could do something similar. There's also one more thing working in Ovechkin's favor. His impressive resume after having a down season. Looking back at points per game, only twice has Ovi's production been in the ballpark of last year. Those seasons coming in 2012 and 2017. And how did he follow those years up? Well, in 2013, he led the league in goals and took home the Hart Trophy. And in 2018, he won another Rocket Richard Trophy. And he and the Capitals took home the Stanley Cup. And sticking with hockey. You can check out the first all-NHL player quiz on Bardown's YouTube channel. Featuring Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, John Tavares, Morgan Riley, Max Domi, Matthew Nyes, Joseph Ball, and Anthony Stollers. <gasps> 
It's a good one. Let's take a look right now. Just a little sneak peek. The one clue I'll give you for this one, you've definitely heard this one the most. I think it's us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that us? Is, is it Boston? It's the Leafs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's ours? That's our team? We've changed it like 30 times. I have no clue. <laughs> Can we change it again? That one I've heard. That one I know. Boston? Boston. That's Boston. Is that Boston? Oh, that's Boston. Now there we go. Yeah. I feel like you're unlocking like bad memories in my brain as we're doing this. That, that one was game seven, <laughs> one, one. Should have just got guys that one, right? <laughs> Oh, how no matter what they all do, it was Boston. That's got to haunt your dreams. That goal horn is sitting in your dreams for sure. <laughs> it's Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. So you know what that means. It's time for FanDuel Fast Facts. I feel like I've been doing pretty well with these, but my producers have been sewering me from the jump. So let's see how we do today. 40 seconds on the clock. Here we go. The Cowboys have won six straight games against the Giants by at least seven points. They are 5.5 point favorites tonight. I hate that against New York. Dak Prescott is 12 and 2 against the Giants, averaging 263.9 passing yards per game. His 851 passing yards leads the league. His passing yards for tonight are 256.5 on FanDuel. That was a whole stat. Thank you. Daniel Jones has, has thrown for over 200 yards and is in just four of his last 12 total starts. His line tonight against the Cowboys is 199.9. The over-under is set at 45.5. The Cowboys and their opponents have gone over that in three straight. Dallas put up 40 points or more in both games last season against the Giants alone. Daniel Jones has just one passing touchdown in his last four games at primetime. In primetime, Dak, Pre Dak, Pres uh, Dak Prescott has thrown multiple touchdowns. Oh my. Dak! That is so annoying. Okay, how many is that? One, two, three, four, four, five. five. I mean, five is pretty good considering three of them had five different stats in one. So, I don't know, no one's gonna beat me, I don't think. I think I'm, I think I'm so queen at this. <laughs> Time to my favorite segment and yours, that we love sports today. Why we love sports today. And this might be one of those wholesome videos that you and I see today. Together, let's watch now. All right. Okay, if that kid is not in the Olympics one day, I will be so sad. I just, we need to show this clip and then show him running for the first, I don't know. This is just wholesome, it's love. It really is the reason why we love sports. That's it for me today with Sarah Pickett and Mouth Pacific. Have a good one.